The non-remittance of tax deductions by ministries, departments and agencies of government has led to the loss of tax revenue of 5.8 billion naira by the Federal Inland Revenue Service in 2019. Away from tax, as we celebrate 2022 Armed Forces Remembrance Day, we would be looking at the lives of Nigeria's military men. As always, we'll also be going through the major papers and having a review of today's big stories. And when we also have a guest, join the conversation. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a great time to be on your screen this beautiful Monday morning. I am Messi Boko. And I'm Kofi Bartels. Uh, nice to have you join us on what is a beautiful Monday morning. All right, then, so as usual, it's good, good morning to have you. you. Yeah, good morning it's, it's to you. It's the first time, and um, <laughs> I'm glad to say I'm here with you. Yeah, it's good to oh, see wow. you. Fantastic. It's yeah, going to be a great show. You. Great show. All right, so we're going to be having two, I mean, two hours of great conversation. Of course, we apologize for bringing the show a little bit behind schedule, and that's due to some issues beyond our country. But it's a good thing that we're here and we're up and running. So, yes, we start off with top trending, and usually uh, these are conversations generating the, uh, you know, conversations uh, generating reactions in different spaces across board. Now, we start off with a 38-year-old lady who has actually declared an interest. I mean, she is the very first female uh, to declare her intentions of wanting to become a president in 2023. Talking about Khadija Ukunu Lamidi, uh, she's a media personnel and the founder of Slice Media Solutions. Uh, there's been a lot of conversations surrounding our, uh, the 38-year-old female presidential aspirant and uh, the talks has been buzzing for a very long time. Now, some people are saying, under what political party is she vying as? Others are saying, oh, this is not an issue of, uh, you know, gender. It's not a gender issue. It's okay to have your intentions being declared. But what, I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about good governance here. But others have also actually said this is actually very, I mean, courageous. I mean, it's very courageous of her to actually declare intentions. And it's a good thing. You know? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, um, she's the first female to declare her intention to run for the office of president in 2023, um, 38 years, that's absolutely so young, you know, <laughs> compared to the other female contestants that um, we've been seeing. But the good thing about it is she's female, you know, and she's below 40. So those are the positives that uh, a lot of Nigerians, especially on Twitter, I think we can talk about Twitter safely now that uh, the ban has been lifted. Um, they are really praising her. A lot of Nigerians are saying she's bold, and she's courageous. I saw one post on social media, which I'd like to go to. Someone put up something saying, um, dear young people. It was like a letter, an open letter to young people. Dear young people, to wake up one morning and decide you want to run for president is an absolute joke. You know, it's a general of reactions. And the person went on, went on to say, well, this isn't the student union government, SUG. Uh, you just pop out of nowhere and want to run for presidency. Um, and went on to say, like, you wouldn't even start from local government chairman. You know, so these are some of the conversations going online, especially with the older generation saying you have to go through the process and don't just stand up and think you can be. So, so, so whoever put up that actually letter has, you know, points there. Now, it's a good thing, like I mentioned earlier, and it's a good thing to see, you know, females saying, I'm declaring for president. Uh, it's very bold, courageous of her. And uh, apart from that, she's very young, like you also mentioned. This is a positive, but what are the reality? You begin to ask yourself, in a, in a system, in a country where we have two dominant political parties, it's, you have the APC or the PDP. And that's the fact, whether or not we want to agree. So you have several political parties and others, and that's what it looks like. So you ask yourself, on the what party are you vying? And you also want to ask the issue, if she's saying she wants to uh, you know, the way of uh, independent candidacy. So another question would be, are there laws backing it? We know that, you know, there's a bill, there was a bill that was seeking for, uh, you know, independent candidacy and that has just gone through second reading. But what would happen after what? So all of that. So, um, it's, it's quite a dicey one. Very dicey you know, one. Yeah, but you know, she, she, she did say in her, in her, um, uh, announcement or declaration speech that she's, um, announcing herself for, uh, the political parties that are ready to take her on, you know, um, or to invite her, you know, and she has not yet said which political party. Um, but I do suspect she is very aware that she can't run on her own. You know, it remains to be seen where she'll pitch her tent. Um, she is a um, daughter of a former uh, minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, or rather, former Federal Works Commissioner Latif Olufemi 
Okunu. Um, and so she has she has a pedigree, she has a heritage, you know. Someone said something that she can't even run a WhatsApp group efficiently. Um, <laughs> and you want to run a country of 250 million people. So, so I, think, I think that's a bit harsh, you know. No, no, so but um, <laughs> some of these concerns are very real. As much as we would say it's very brave of her, very courageous, we're talking about having young people rule. But you see, the issue of governance has, uh, for me, I, I really think that the issue of governance has nothing to do with whether you're old or young. So the argument, if we have younger people, we're going to have a good government. That's not a criteria for having uh, good it's policies. About age. Yeah, it's not about age. That's what I think. It's also not about a gender issue. Anyone can actually fail. So um, we're talking about we need to see your pedigree. We need to see history and, and what have you. We need to see your pedigree. We need to see... Um, you know, Your history, we need to see background and yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. Of course, you want to also agree with me that she has, you know, good ac academic uh, performance and qualification if you want to go by that. Is well, it, you see the it, issue of the experience yeah. also. Yeah. I mean, some people would say it's okay to start from local government, you know, drive, let's see what you can actually do. But winning elections goes beyond having a beautiful face and pretty degree and what have you. Uh, it goes beyond that. We're talking about numbers. We're talking about structures. Those who actually vote most times are not on Twitter. So you have the people in the grassroots. You talk about <laughs> grassroots elections. How many people know you? Because you could be very popular, and when it comes to the day of the election, it doesn't, it doesn't translate okay. into getting votes. Ask Banky W. <laughs> <laughs> Our good friend Banky. All um, right. Well, th that's the much we can actually take. I, I mean, uh, we were hoping that we can have enough time to talk about this, but of course, we'll definitely have a time where we sit back and have this conversation. We step on the bricks right now. When we come through off the press would be uh, the next thing on the table. Please stick around.